Uh, thank you very much, uh, farmers. So today we are going to talk about what you need to set up a feedlot. One, you must have land where you're going to establish pastures because as I've been saying, you have to make sure that you have enough feeds to have these guys enjoy to their fullest. So you must have the pasture. Secondly, you must make sure that you have enough water supply. You can uh, look at harvesting water because as you see the structures, you can harvest a lot of water here. Uh, then two, you need also a natural source of water. You can have a borehole, you can have a shallow well, but you must have a reliable uh, source of uh, water. After that, you need to make sure that you set up an economically friendly structure. I've seen people spend a lot of money on uh, structures. and then they fail to stock the animals. But for God's sake, what we are going to sell is what? Is the animals. So after setting up a, a friendly structure, a structure that is simple. These are trees. Down there where they illuminate from and exercise from, there is concrete. Just very, very, very simple. And um, when that is done, then we establish pastures. On pasture establishment, there is no, there is no shortcut. You must have the source of hay. You must have the source of silage in order to run a successful uh, feed. Why I take you through is that I believe this works and I know it works so I want us to make good investment decisions if we are going to improve the livestock sector of this country you must be able to make hay you must be able to make, uh, to make silage so that we can have these guys enjoy feeds as much as they can. Limiting the feeders will limit the source of growth. We must make sure they are satisfied all the time and uh, that will ensure growth of our animals the way, the way we want it to be. So once you have the source of feeders, that's where you're going to uh, plant your Corolis Guyana which we normally mix with central sima to make very good quality silage, hay, sorry. Then we are going to plant our sugar napia or pakchong to make sure that we are going to have uh, silage. However, we can also make silage, for example, from different other ingredients. Especially, this, we can get support from the crop sector. We can make hillage from uh, the maize stovers after harvesting maize, removing the cobs. You can actually turn that into feeds so that you have these guys eat all the time. You have enough. You can use uh, rice straws. You can use sugarcane tops. And you make very good quality hay silage and then you can mix and give these guys. You can see how they, they, they like getting feed from my hands. So, the most important part is you must have enough feeders to make sure that these guys uh, uh, eat. And the source of feeders is not limited. Come, we are able to give you very good quality advice on exactly what you need to do uh, to make sure that you run a successful uh, 
uh, feedlot. You can see how these guys have lined up everywhere to, uh, to pick the feeds and they are very, they are very happy. So once you have those in place, then you will look for good quality animals. I want you to give a look to these bulls. These are bulls which are for beef. These are bolland and they are doing the work. However, we have put other breeders to make sure that we do a comparison. And by the end of the day, we are able to advise you, to give you the best advice on the quality of animals that you need to put uh, in your feedback. So the Boran, the Boran crosses are really performing much better than the local Ankore. So, but we want to see at the end of the day uh, how the performance is going to be for all the breeds. So I believe if we move this journey together, then at the end of the day, we are able to come up with something tangible as we work towards improving the beef sector of this great nation. These animals that are feeding from here, that are feeding these high quality feeders, which are mixed well, they are not moving. We are going to provide, we are going to come up with beef that is going to be sweet, that is going to be tender and tasty for ourselves. So in this journey, we're actually going to improve the beef that we eat in Uganda. With this kind of interventions, we are not going, we are going to stop eating very mature and emaciated and old dairy animals that people are putting, uh, taking for sale. And these are the ones that are slaughtered that we are eating. So uh, with this, as many farmers are coming to join uh, the call, we believe that uh, the beef industry of this great nation is going to improve. Otherwise, thank you very much for uh, following Robert Holdings Limited and following Brian. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can always get these updates. Thank you so much.